beaten, sexually assaulted, left for dead. The grim details of what Winnipeg police say happened to teenager Rennell Harper. Today, they charged two people in connection with her case and said a specific but unusual tactic helped in their investigation. Cameron McIntosh has our story from Winnipeg tonight. Cameron? Wendy, it was a brutal attack here on this dark path along the Assiniboine River. But police are saying the case was solved quickly because there was a name and a face to the victim. It was an extraordinary move for police to identify Rennell Harper, a 16-year-old sexual assault victim. But her parents agreed to it. Now her great aunt and uncle say it helped solve a brutal attack. We thought we were going to lose her at first, but it's amazing. It's a miracle. It's a miracle she survived. Friday night, Harper was with friends in downtown Winnipeg. Police say she got separated and encountered two males. Near this bridge, they attacked her with a weapon and sexually assaulted her. At one point, she was in the water and managed to crawl out before being assaulted again and left for dead. Saturday morning, she was found here unconscious. I felt it was really important to to humanize her. Police say releasing her name led to a flood of tips and unexpectedly led to more awareness of the case within the police force itself, helping link this attack to another the same night. The public release provided many of our officers with detail that they wouldn't have known uh, before. And in this case, the the officer was able to make that link between Rennell Harper and this second attack. Two Aboriginal males, a 17-year-old we can't identify, but who posted photos of himself between attacks wearing a jacket matching a description of Harper's, and a 20-year-old, Justin James Hudson, both face charges that include attempted murder and aggravated sexual assault. In Winnipeg, the case has drawn parallels to Tina Fontaine, a 15-year-old Aboriginal girl who was assaulted, murdered, and whose body was dumped in the Red River. There's no evidence the two cases are connected, but both have cast a light on violence against Aboriginal women. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. If you're violating and almost taking a woman or young girl's life, uh, that's something that is cause for concern for all of us. Meanwhile, Harper's family says the girl is in intensive care, but will recover. I told her that she's going to walk again and enjoy time with her friends again. She was smiling at me. One negative effect of that release was also unforeseen. Tonight, some people were planning to hold a rally in Renal Harper's name. Her family said they didn't want that. They don't want this to become politicized. Wendy? Thanks, Cameron. Cameron McIntosh in Winnipeg tonight.